you became an entrepreneur to make money. And don't forget, you became an entrepreneur to have a life. This is the Savvy Podcast, helping entrepreneurs connect with the vision that's bigger than themselves. Learn how to stop trading in your wife or husband and kids for your success. Get ready to have your beliefs about traditional leadership methods challenged and learn how to enjoy massive productivity gains and in less time than you can believe. This is the Savvy Podcast. Welcome to the Savvy Podcast. I'm Tim Marshall, and today I have the privilege of hosting, hosting Dan Gingis for a brief chat. Dan is an international keynote speaker and consultant who believes that remarkable customer experience is your best marketing. His 20-year professional career, including leadership positions at McDonald's, Discover, and I'll have to ask you to pronounce this because I don't want to get it wrong, Dan. Humana. Humana. There we go. So Dan is the author of a book, Winning at Social Customer Care, how top brands create engaging experience on social media, a host of experience this pod show, um, podcast. Sorry, well, let's start there one again. The Experience This Show podcast and a regular contributor to Forbes. And you can learn more about them at dangingus.com and we will drop that link anywhere you're watching this or listening. The link will be there to click through. So welcome, Dan. It's a privilege to have you there. And uh, I know there's another book about to drop as well. So the audience can keep a watch out for that as well. So that's super exciting, but welcome. Well, hey, Tim, thank you uh, so much for having me on the show. Looking forward to talking with you and uh, and getting in a good seven minutes in. Fantastic, fantastic. So should we jump straight in, eh? Let's hit the timer and go to the Do it. straight on seven questions, seven minutes. Who's your ideal client? I would say a uh, chief experience officer or chief customer officer, also a chief marketing officer, because I work at the intersection of customer experience and marketing. Yeah. As I mentioned to you, or as you said in the intro, I spent 20 years in corporate America, mostly as a marketer, but over time really fell in love with customer experience and got to the point where I truly believe that rather than your next marketing campaign and focusing on yet another television commercial or email campaign or social campaign, that focusing on the customers you already have and creating a remarkable experience for them is so much more powerful because when you do that, they tell other people. And when they do that, it's much more credible than the brand talking. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, you're starting to resonate with, with me already. The uh, we talk about having uh, a choir, so just just get your choir singing louder and louder. More people coming singing louder. So, mate, you're resonating, fantastic. So, number two, what's the problem you solve? So, most companies are so focused on sales and bringing in new customers that they are not paying attention to what I call the leaky bucket. Sure. Now, the leaky bucket is the back end where you have customers that are leaving you every day. And the worst part is they're not telling you why they're leaving. Yes. The good ones are the ones that actually complain on the way out the door, because then at least you know what you're doing wrong and you can fix it. Yes. But too often the people that leave are silent and that's the leaky bucket. And so I help companies fix that leaky bucket so that they keep more of their customers and those customers remain loyal their tenure gets longer they spend more and as we mentioned they tell their friends fantastic absolutely fantastic so for those that are sitting here listening today and they're going this is sounding interesting what are the typical symptoms people experience when they have this problem when they when they're not being aware of their client experience well, the first thing is, is that their customer service department is overwhelmed. Sure. Uh, and uh, another person uh, once said that customer service is what happens when customer experience breaks. Yeah, sure. It's exactly right. Right. I mean, nobody calls customer service just to say hi, or frankly, just to compliment the company. They always call because something's wrong. Sure. And so the first symptom is you're getting too many complaints in your contact center. Another symptom would be that your sentiment on social media is not where you want it to be, that there's too much negative sentiment or yes. maybe just neutral sentiment. There's not enough positive, right? Sure. Because uh, chances are you're doing some things right. You're doing some good things, but people aren't noticing because there's too many pain points in the way that is causing a negative experience. Sure, sure. Now, for those that are sitting here going, yep, 
we can feel that. What are the common mistakes people make when they try and go out and solve this? I think the biggest mistake is trying to do too much. Sure. So a lot of times we look at wonderful, amazing brands like Four Seasons or Disney or others. And while I love those brands, the problem is those brands have millions and millions, maybe billions of dollars to work with to work on customer experience. And and most of the people listening to this show probably don't have that luxury. Correct. So I always focus on examples that have three qualities. They're simple, they're practical, and they're inexpensive. I believe that you can greatly enhance your customer experience with simple, practical, and inexpensive solutions. So shooting for the moon is usually the biggest mistake because it becomes too overwhelming. It's a project that never gets finished and it's way too much money. Yeah, sounds absolutely uh, a common problem we run into. So number five, and we're we're two minutes just over, well, we're coming up to two and a half minutes, which so we're a little bit over that. What's one valuable free action that the audience can implement that will help them solve this problem? Sure. I think my number one tip is become a customer of your own company. Sure. However you can do that. And I understand there's those of you in some industries that are like, but I can't possibly do that. Yes, you can. You can pretend to be a customer of your company. You can go to your website and try to uh, set up an account and try to sign in and try to forget your password and go through that process. You can call your customer service department. You can pay attention to all of the pieces of mail and email that you get from your company. If you absolutely cannot become a customer of your own company, which is the best thing you can do, then align yourself with a customer that will tell you everything that happens to them. In other words, hey, I got a phone call from Steve in sales today. Hey, I got an email today from your marketing department. And they they literally share the minute by minute with you because only by looking at the entire journey are you going to start to see the the parts of the journey where you are annoying your customers and probably yes. don't even know that you're doing it. Yeah, yeah, so true. So true. So, so true. So where can we direct the the audience to um, get soak up some of your information, get some free resources? Sure. So as you mentioned, my website is dangingus.com. Uh, that may not be obviously spellable to everybody. So it's uh, Dan is the easy part. It's G-I-N-G-I-S-S. Um, I do have a bi-weekly customer experience newsletter that I send out. It's intentionally bi-weekly because, hey, I'm a customer experience guy and I don't like my email inbox filling up either. So I only hit you twice a month with uh, really good stuff. Um, There's also a white paper you can download. Um, And I am very active on Twitter at DGingus and at LinkedIn. Uh, I post content there all the time and I'm a creator and a curator. So I love sharing my own content, of course, but I really love to share the content of other people that I think are, are saying and writing and doing amazing things. So uh, hopefully that's valuable to the audience. Sounds fantastic. And we'll drop all the links in below so that everyone can find you nice and easy. And 30 seconds left from your years of experience. What's the most valuable free tip that you can give everyone today? I would say value your current customers as much as you value your prospects. If you look at the amount of money that companies as a whole spend in marketing and then compare that to what they spend in customer service, it's not even close. It is multiple hundreds of times different, right? And yet the current customers are the ones that are paying our salaries, that are keeping our business going, that are keeping the lights on. So find the time and the resources and the money to focus on your existing customers. Because look, without customers, there is no business. So true, so true. It's been an absolute pleasure having you here, Dan. And no doubt we'll be talking again in the future. And for those that um, this has really rung true for, jump on these links and search it out because, hey, we all like a great customer experience. And so thanks for coming on board. Appreciate it, Tim. Awesome to talk with you. Cheers. You've been listening to The Savvy Podcast, helping entrepreneurs connect with a vision that's bigger than themselves, stopping the trading in their wife and husband and kids for their success. We hope you've gotten some useful and practical information from this show, and we hope you had fun along the way. 
We know we did. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, if you want to know more about The Savvy Method, hit the website at www.thesavvymethod.com. We'll see you again soon.